ladies and gentlemen. And I hope that includes all the other people that you mentioned. <coughs> As a patron of the college, I give myself a very hearty welcome. <laughs> so when I first heard about your invitation, I was naturally very flattered and grateful. And for a short while, I held the wildly improbable notion that I would, I would get a meal at the Guild Hall without having to make a speech for it. <clears throat> I'd like to say how very delighted I am to be here this evening. Uh, I can say that in all consciousness because I didn't know I was going to be given a cheque for 5,000 for turning up. <laughs> one or two messages here which I would like to read to you. And I've been in a bit of a quandary as to quite what order to read them in. So I've arranged them in the sizes of the bits of paper they're written on. <laughs> so there's no significance at all. The trouble is that I have to get back for the Queen's birthday parade on Saturday. Now don't ask me to explain why she has an official birthday in June when her proper birthday is in April. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to accept it. Britain is not just an old country of tottering ruins inhabited by idle roues in eyeglasses. <laughs> Where yokels quaff ale by the tankard outside rickety pubs. And where all the soldiers are dressed in scarlet tunics and bearskin caps spend that time marching up and down for the benefit of visitors from abroad. <laughs> I would like to discharge a debt of gratitude to the citizens of Edinburgh for your hospitality to myself and to thousands of other servicemen who managed to get here for a few hours' relaxation during the war. I know we were a dreadful nuisance and frequently misbehaved. <laughs> My generation, although reasonably well schooled, is probably the worst educated of this age. This contribution is to be spent on a children's playground in the east end of London. All I hope is that the children who play there will have a thought for their sugar daddies here in the Albany Club. <laughs> uh, what looks charming to the designer and to the finance committee and possibly to the layout committee uh, may be deadly boring to a child of four. <laughs> it's all very well to praise the cow, but don't forget the milkmaid, she delivers the good. <laughs> We, we seem to have got into the habit nowadays of thinking that all our troubles are going to be solved uh, by uh, machinery of this sort. That uh, if you have a lot of science in some strange way, it's going to solve everything. Um, in fact, of course, that nothing could be further from the truth. That ultimately some poor, um, well, I won't call him a clock, but some poor chap, <laughs> of which there are a great many here, has actually got to... <laughs> As you heard, tonight's check brings the total collected in the last three years to 30,000 pounds, which I... I think that must have been almost as surprised as you are at the sound. Uh, yes men as well as no men and we want uh, people who can encourage and people who can see further than the end of their noses and further than the end of the ministry supplied vote and like that. <laughs> because that's another thing is that, that we're all in this together I noticed the minister looking rather smug when uh, <laughs> uh, when Mr. Burrow said that the press is sometimes rather unkind about the aircraft industry He's part of that industry, really well. <laughs> if he chooses wrong, it's not the um, aircraft industry's fault. Uh, I think that's enough. That's enough of that.